C-O-S-M right here. I am going to copy this and then we're going to post this to the room, guys. So this is the C-O-S-M. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the chat room, guys. Hold on. So this is part of the corporate actions email that if you are part of Success Trader, they, they send it out. So when you woke up that morning, COSM is a 25 to 1 reverse split, guys. And so you do the math. That's the break even. So $8 after the reverse split. And so what happens to this, guys? When they do a reverse split, a lot of these... A lot of the brokers you have, like a Mary Trade, they do not, they do not give you that shares right away to sell because it takes a day or so for the transfer agent to change the CUSP ID, CUSP ID, and so what happens is your shares get locked. And this is a this back in the day when I was trading penny stocks, guys. This was a huge, huge edge for me. It was a huge edge because I was trading with direct access broker. Uh, um, Brokers like, uh, like you know, like success rate. That's one of them. Direct access. So basically, I get the shares beforehand. It's up to me. It's up to me to manage my position. If it's right or wrong, I take the loss. I cannot blame them for giving my shares too early, right? Because let's say I hold. I'll make it for some uh, simplicity reasons, right? Uh, twenty five hundred shares, two thousand five hundred shares of COSM uh, the day before the split. And so after twenty five to one. Back 2,500 divided by 100, I should only have 250 shares. Wait, is that right? Uh, 1,000 shares, I'm sorry. Uh, 25 to 1. So let's say, to make it easy, let's say I have 25,000 shares. Let's say I have 25,000 shares and it's a 25 to 1 reverse split. So I need to divide that by 25. So I, I, I only should have like 1,000 shares, right guys? 1,000 shares uh, post split adjusted. Okay, 25 reverse split. So you divide it by 25. So you should have less because the price went up by 25 times. So your position size should go down by 25 times. But so if I wake up and I see 25,000 shares, I'm like, oh shit, something's wrong. They did not do the reverse adjustment. So if I had sold all my 25,000 shares, I would be net short 25,000 shares. <laughs> Uh, so with 25, I would be net short 24,000 shares. See how crazy it is? I should only have 1,000 shares, but instead I sold 25,000 shares thinking, holy shit, I'm rich. Not only the price of eight bucks, I have 25 times of it. So, oh my God, I went from a tiny position at 33 cents to a ginormous gain. And so a lot of these guys, what happened is this, they see this and then they automatically sell. They go, oh shit. And the next thing you know, they are short. And so the brokers then buy them in. And so a lot, so I don't know this was a setup at that time, but something's suspicious. You have to do the math yourself because there's no such thing as free money, guys. If you oversold and you happen to win, you get to keep it. But the problem is if you lose, you're, you, they owe you. I mean, you owe them. Or are they going to have to run and sue you and, and the broker goes bankrupt? So someone went bankrupt. I don't know. It was a setup, whatever. Now we realize it was a setup for sure. Because you know why? COSM did an offering yesterday. They did an offering. So they, they screwed everybody. This was a complete setup, guys. It's totally legal, totally legit. They set you up and you fell for it. Okay, so all those smart guys, I thought they had some insider information that they thought that they were being cute by doing big time shorting because what happens is uh, a lot of these, lot mo back in the day, guys, <laughs> reverse splits are very bad. Reverse splits means that the company is doing shitty. They need to put their prices above $1 or to have some sort of, ma it, there, there's a bunch of rules for um NASDAQ listing. You have to comply with NASDAQ listing. You have to be over a dollar share or have a number of um, stockholder investors and equity value, all that kind of stuff, right, guys? So, so that's why they do the reverse split. Well, usually what they do is they do the reverse split. Now it goes from 30 cents to eight bucks. Then they do an offering. That's the goal of a reverse split. The goal of a reverse split is to stay in the business. Uh, no one wants to own your stock. They're selling that shit down to under a dollar. Now you're gonna do reverse split to meet the compliance reasons. And usually it comes with an offering. And so a lot of the smart guys, smart professional shorters, they know that. 
And so they are hammering the stock because usually, usually there's an offering that's coming. But what happened in this case was, dude, they got jacked, man. They got set up. They got hosed. And so I think a lot of the brokers didn't have the corporate action. Sometimes a transfer agent screws up and is slow to give the shares or whatever, right, guys? And so they got set up. And it's very easy when the algo guys, that's part of the scheme. I am not sure if that's part of the scheme or not. But you always have to think in your head, guys. Something suspicious. So don't touch it, man. If you touch shit like that, you are being, you are being set up. Okay, someone knows. Someone knows. There's no such thing as free money, guys. Either, you know, if it's free money, why would they give it to you, right, guys? So be very suspicious. Uh, suspicious. The game is always a reverse split to do an offering. Most of the time, reverse splits are very, very bad for investors. You get wiped out as an investor. You start with twenty five thousand shares, and now you end with thousand shares. And you're like, fuck, what the hell happened? And you can't even sell a thousand shares because if you use Ameritrade, TD, Waterhouse, whatever the hell you use, those retail brokers will hold your position. So those guys, so let's take a look at the stock once again, guys. COSM, reverse split, $8, right? $8, so $8 is this line here. This is the break-even line, guys. Right there, <laughs> that's a pivot line. <laughs> it chewed it automatically, right? So uh, these algos, what they trade by is technical analysis, and so it, it coincides exactly with the pivot line. Amazing! Look at this price right here, guys. Eight dollars sixty cents. And what did we say? The a split adjusted price was eight dollars and twenty five cents. So pretty damn close to the split adjusted price, right, guys? And so at that fucking point, at that point, <laughs> it's like, dude. It's either make it or break it. Get the hell out if you're short. If you don't, this is what happens. So they were set up, guys. It was a huge setup to do financing, all that stuff. And, they, and then they got, what was the uh, offering at? At the market, it was like $11, guys. Holy shit. So this piece of shit stock that had to do reverse split to do an offering got bailed out because they got set up and a bunch of smart traders thought that they could game and short, they got killed, which helped increase the price, which helped increase the offering so that they could get the offering out at $11. Pure, pure manipulation. This is the game of small caps, guys. Cannot cry to the regulators because you know why? You made money with these schemes. You just happened to get caught. Okay, guys, there are a lot of smarter guys than you out there. The reason why you got caught because you did not understand this game. So best to avoid bullshit like this, guys. Best to just fucking bullshit avoid. Because these are one-off scenarios that you cannot predict. I am not in the business of lottery winners. One day I might win the little lottery, but when I lose, I will blow up, guys. That's the whole thing, guys. This whole thing is a one-off. It's a black swan of black swans. You cannot predict this shit, guys. They, they set you up, and when you lose, you blow the hell up. Okay, the only thing you do is wait for that shit, and then, hey, if you want, you can short on the backside down. But this play is way too risky. Reverse splits. So this is so we two in summary, guys. In summary about this stock. In summary about this stock. Reverse splits used to be very easy to short. Every time I did reverse split, I short, I short, 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 short. I win, I win, win, win. The market has adapted. Everything that used to work does may not work anymore because it's too damn obvious, guys. And like there are smarter guys out there that is going to Put the lure out, put the bait out, and some guy's gonna walk into that bait and get bear trapped. And exactly what it is. They got bear trapped. Okay? So, what worked last year, the year before, 100% home runs, you have to be very, very careful. It leads me to this risk management is the key, guys. Risk management is the key. Doesn't matter what market you're in, adapting or not, if you have proper risk management and you take the, and you take the loss, you make the plan, and you stick to your plan, you'll keep adding losers, you are fine. That is the one thing that remains consistent throughout the 20 years of training I've done, guys. Okay, I've seen, I've seen a lot of this shit, I'm just shaking my head. Right now, they're trapping the hell out of you, but they, the algos are getting smarter and smarter. The, I used to trade penny stocks, is because there were no algos, 
in penny and small caps. Because why? They're all trading IBM, Apple, big things. Why would they do that now? Because back then, algos were not as sophisticated. They were billion-dollar algos written by these market makers. And why would they apply it to an illiquid market such as small caps? So the edge of shorting back in the day was small caps because they did not have algos competing. Goldman Sachs don't give a fuck about 33-cent stock. They don't give a fuck about $3 stocks, guys. But now you have little firms creating the algos. Because now technology is driven, driving everything, guys. You can, we can still beat the algos. We beat it all the time. It's just knowing these things, guys. Knowing the key is stock selection. Okay? I, today, I passed. I didn't even touch COSM. I didn't touch ICCM. I do not want to touch one-off stocks that I cannot easily predict. It is not a setup that is reliable. That's my point to you. It's it, it's too obscure. There's it, It's so random. You don't, you don't know when it happens. And when it happens, you're biting the ass. Okay? So reverse splits are very, very dangerous. Okay? Let me tell you something. Because what happens is when they do reverse split, they clean up the shareholders. So the float goes from 25 million divided by 2 to 1 million. That's what happens in those cases, guys. Reverse splits, they clean up the float. The float gets reduced dramatically. And who has the shares left is whoever is the insider, whoever is running the scheme, whoever is doing the financing. They're all coordinated, okay? Which leads me to ICCM. Let's take a look at that. ICCM. Someone got caught with their pants down yesterday, dude. This was 98 cents. Ran up to a, almost $12. Thank God there was no low case. Thank God I do not short after hours. This is why. Let's take a look at ICCM. Was this a reverse split too? This is fucking crazy as hell too, man. All these stocks are just crazy, guys. I'm telling you guys right now. Okay, ICCM was not a split. I don't know why the hell it ran, but dude, it ran and it collapsed. It caught some short seller off by surprise because, dude, it's a dollar. And you know what, man? What the float? The float is tiny. Let's take a look at this, guys. You can always, it's only 10 million, but the key is insiders own most of it, guys. And institutional owns the act. So what is left? 20% of this this tiny float, man. So you have you have to be careful, guys. This is small. This is low float season. Low floats are very dangerous. Okay, guys. That's why I do not trade low floats on day one. Do not short low floats on day one. Do not short low floats on day one. It will fucking kill you. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're dead. Okay. It's like, and they can reclaim like crazy. That's the whole thing with low floats, guys. You have to put a hard stop out there. You cannot be greedy. So I'm going to tell you something about this. These system traders that are doing all day faders, they are getting destroyed. It's because you know what? These algos know. These algos know. So they're just waiting. They're waiting for you guys to just be too comfortable holding an all day fader on a low float. And out of nowhere, you're blown the fuck away. Because what they do is, dude, they, they are, these algos, they know what size each firm has. It's, it's a cheat code, man. I'm telling you right now, man. If you take a look at the book of, a, uh, um, dude, I'm, there's a lot of books on this guy. So it's about, um, what's that guy's book? Uh, they want to talk about high frequency trading. So I'll tell you something, man. This is something that people don't know. NASDAQ is not government funded. <laughs> in terms of it's, it's a for-profit organization it's not meant to be fair nasdaq these exchanges are not meant to be fair they are for profit so you know what happens they let the algos they let goldman sachs all of those algos all those instructions sit on the nasdaq server okay oh it's called flash boys there's a book called flash boys read it if you want to read it it it, this, it was a big thing like a decade ago you guys are probably in diapers, it's called Flash Boys, guys. Uh, it explains all this shit, and it's fucking, it's it's crazy. So what happens is, it's a for-profit organization. I always thought back in the day, man, oh, it's ran by the government, it's fair, bullshit. So what they do is this. 
they let the algo sit on the actual NASDAQ server itself. The, the, the machine that takes the order flow, the machine that gives the quotation, they let you sit there. Because why? It's fast. You're sitting there. And so back in the day, guys, when these computers was, were not that fast, uh, 10 milliseconds was very fucking fast. No one can do shit in 10 milliseconds. You know how fast 10 milliseconds is? Uh, one, one 10 milliseconds is like, like 10 one thousandths of a second. So it would take you 1,000, uh, one, one hundred. Basically, it's, it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second. It's like this. It's even faster. My, it's faster than I can snap my fingers. Okay? And back in the day, computers were not that fast. And so it doesn't really matter if it sits on there. You, the, the, the advantage, the edge that these algos have is it's kind of small. But what they give you the ability to do, though, is this. This is fucking even crazier, man. This is the shit I fucking found out. They let you... If you pay them enough money, sit on your their server, so therefore the latency, the speed between you getting the quotation, they getting the quotation, they get it faster than you by by 10, 10 milliseconds, for example, right? What can a human being do in 10 milliseconds? Not much, dude, not fucking much. But a computer nowadays can do a million instructions within there. Think about this. Computers are running so freaking fast where they can do a million instructions within a second. So what happens is they see all of the overflow, they do their calculations and you're screwed. You're fucking screwed. They see your order before you come, before you even post. Because that's why you see like it, on these illiquid stocks, try to place an order. You see someone always upticking you and then you, you cancel, it goes back down. They front run it because they are milliseconds faster than you. So when you click submit, the order gets sent to NASDAQ server. They see that order coming in and they're faster than you and they front run you. So you always, and so when you fill, <laughs> that's the shit you don't want to fill. And it may not apply to retail as much because we put a limit order, we're fine. It is a big deal when you talk about 10 million shares of a hedge fund moving stocks around, talking about your 401k, your retirement fund, your IRA index funds, things like that, guys. It's huge and it adds up. A, a, a penny is adds up. So what happens is this. These algos are always trying to do high frequency trading, try to beat each other. Eventually, these algos, they, they, they used to make a big spread. Now they make a tiny spread, small. It's a race towards zero, basically. And so they must game it in other ways. They cannot make money off of scalping uh, spreads anymore because spreads went down significantly to like a penny or less because they have dark pools. And so they must game you in other ways, guys. And so this is what they're doing, okay? So don't be fooled. They see all your fucking orders. They see every shit because NASDAQ allows them to see it before you. Okay, and so I see. So this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Okay, these these plays are not are designed to trap you. These algos already know exactly what they're doing. And so ICCM came at the end of the day and people think they're cute. They can't. And then these, it ran after hours. After hours, there's no hard stops. There are no <laughs> halts, you know? It just fucking goes, guys. And, and it starts to skip. And when they're skipping, and most of these other market makers, they close out by the end of the day. And I go home, you go home, but then you're the only sucker that's stuck. And so artificially, it runs from a, dollar to eleven dollars because you got trapped and the moment you cover at the very top goes all the way fucking down and you know what today you think it's a fucking easy short look at this shit now you're fucking dead again eleven fucking dollars goes all the way to two dollars and you wake up and you go oh it's an easy short three. Oh fuck you're dead so I don't even bother, guys. I have no edge in this. I don't care if I miss making money. This is not something that's that's repeatable. It's not something I can be consistently looking for. It's not a setup for me to make money in. I do not need to waste my time touching this shit. And so if you want to be a real serious day trader, it's a marathon and not a sprint, guys. Okay, don't waste your time trying to figure this shit out. You won't because you this is way above your pay grade, guys. You would not know any of this shit. I don't even know what the hell is going on. You don't know they're liquidating. If they're setting up for an offering, you never know, guys. So if you wanted to short this shit, the only thing you do is wait for the backside and walk this shit down. Okay, and then when it bottoms like this, don't touch this shit. There's a huge gap filled between two bucks and five bucks. And that's where it's going right now, guys. It's trying to go back to the gap field. And when it goes back to the gap field, who the fuck knows what's going to happen, guys? I keep telling the room, guys, the, the resistance is at 
420 and 450. If you want to scalp this shit, trade the channels and be very careful. But this is not, but when you're trading this shit, guys, I always think about this as opportunity cost. This stock requires four eyeballs, four arms, four bank accounts to manage. In the meantime, I'm trading like 10 other stocks all for winners today, guys. Everybody else missed. If you trade this stock, you missed everything else. Everything else was fucking much easier. I posted about my charts always on Twitter, guys. I don't need to talk about it anymore here. But you notice, guys, I trade the easy shit, guys. I'm not here to be a hero. Okay, guys? Heroes blow up. I always tell my friends, I don't want to be the fucking hero. You go, you kill yourself, play the fucking dragon. After you die, I'm going to go there, pick up all the treasures, and go fuck the princess. <laughs> you know, that's what it is, guys. I don't want to be the fucking hero. I'm just chilling, dude, just doing my fucking thing, trying to stay alive, you know. <laughs> that's what trading is, guys. I don't want to be who gives a fuck if you nail this one stock. I nailed 20 other stocks. I made money on the easiest thing, and that's what you should do, guys. You should trade the easy shit, okay? Like we always talk about, I say that I trade the day two plays, those things I like the most. I trade the sympathy plays that come because of these crazy ass stocks. The last thing you want to do is is predict these crazy ass stocks, guys, because they are not my bread and butter. They uh, they don't make me money consistently. I'm focused on things that make me money consistently. Okay, guys, if you want to have fun, trades tiny ass size, but knowing that you have no edge because you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and it's not something that you can train yourself to become better at because it doesn't c come about that often, if hardly ever at all. Now we're gonna talk about Atlas, guys. This is more fun. Okay, <laughs> let me take a bad drink of my Coke. Oh, let me see what's going on here, guys. Let me take a look at my accounts. Whew. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I don't want... Okay, so the format of Instagram Live ongoing now is... It's going to be more fun, guys. I, I'm, I'm kind of sick and tired of for four or five years now talking about the same shit, telling you guys about the MIC process, just showing you guys low-hanging fruit, showing you guys how I trade. It's boring. You guys seen it. I post my charts on Twitter. Uh, the guys are MICC it. Uh, the vid videos we make is always on the My Investing Club uh, YouTube. So we're now, I'm going to go back to the format of telling you things which only experience will know because most of you guys have not even been trading that long. Okay, Five years you guys have been trading because AMC brought you in trading for some reason. COVID uh, three, two years ago brought you into trading. So most of you guys are, most of you guys are pretty new to trading <coughs> because... Uh, because that, that's what it is, man. Because back in the day, it was much easier when no one was fucking trading. Okay? Uh, today is still easy. Easy is relative, guys. It's easier today because there's more volume, more liquidity, more stupid money. So what's, co what's considered easy changes from time to time. Back in the day, I traded penny stocks. Uh, there's always going to be pumpers, guys. Back then, what was that? Awesome penny stocks. Who was around for awesome penny stocks? You remember that shit? They were so freaking huge, guys. So huge. Back then, dude, before inflation, they were bigger than Atlas. They are bigger than everybody you can imagine. They moved with billion dollars of volume, guys. Billion shares, guys. They were ridiculously huge. They were driving... Dude, Atlas is nothing. Those guys can't even buy Bugattis, dude. These guys were buying Bugattis every day. They got to the point where they're so fucking good. They are the reason why the Wolf of Wall Street movie fucked everybody over. Uh, they they could not be caught. They People didn't know where they were. They were around the world. Uh, one guy happens to have the same last name as me, actually. Oh, my God, dude. I got called in to so many of those. I think they were thinking it was me that was running because I traded all those stocks. And I traded them very large sizes. Um, back in the day because they, they, that had an advantage. I knew the, the advantage. I would go along because I was one of the first people that recognized which stocks they did because they had a newsletter. Okay, and then I run it. I, I let them run it all the way up. I ride it and then I short it all the way down. So, I mean, I knew the pattern. I got called in by the SEC to be a witness and all this shit. I never ride any big, to be honest, I don't know who the fuck they are. I had no clue who they are. I don't want to know who they are. I don't need to know anything. And then, so what happens, of course, they all got caught, but I don't know what happened to them. I don't think they were ever caught because these guys were, back in the day, guys, uh, technology was not as as plentiful as it is now. And so they're, they're, they, they hit their tracks very, very well. It was an old school. They did fax machines. They did emails. You know, it's crazy, right, guys? So nowadays, everything is traced. That's why... 
That's why money now, they, 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 um, the re- I'll, I'll tell you something about money, okay? The reason why the US, United States only has a $100 bill max, $100 barely buys you shit nowadays, right, guys? Due to inflation and all that, $100 back in the day, like 1920, was a shit ton of money. You can buy a house for like 1700 bucks, right? Uh, nowadays, 100 bucks barely get one, two like this. <laughs> but anyways, um, the reason is because money, money laundering. They do not want you to carry a suitcase full of cash. So they, in order to carry a million dollars, you have to have a big ass suitcase, right? You can't just carry a little one. So, so uh, that's why crypto. That's why I hate crypto. Crypto you can move money around. It's all about the government trying to control the money supply guy. They do not want you to send money for money laundering, terrorism, all that shit. Okay, uh, they don't give a fuck about you. Actually, it's not about you. It's about the fact that they don't want the money to lead to terrorism and all that shit. They want to know who has the money because they want to tax you on it. It's all about tax. That's why Biden wants to do a six hundred dollar bullshit Venmo tax and all that crap. But anyways, it doesn't fucking matter. The, the point is the money flow, guys. And so what happens is the Atlas guys, okay? The Atlas guys started, uh, I, I recognize some of those guys from the Penny Stock Days, guys. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not going to name any names. In my opinion, guys, those, those guys, they were not successful back in the day. I knew who they were. Um, but they learn. They learn from those days how to pump and all that shit. And so they, in the beginning, they, you know, man, Everybody wants to get rich quick. Everybody wants alerts. Everyone wants to, and during COVID days, everyone was home. They had Biden money. Uh, um, government gave them money for COVID and all that kind of stuff, guys. So they had money to burn. And so no one did anything. Yeah, stimulus money. You were home. It, it, a perfect storm for pumpers to come in. And I don't pump, guys. I never did that. I mean, I, I don't want to go to prison. I can day trade myself and make money. If I pumper, those guys are just they they load up. So let me tell you how that works, guys. Oh my god, these these these. The funny thing is, these um, if you take a look at the SEC filings, they they show the Discord chats, the private chats, how they arrange the pumps. One guy gets in first. He alerts his buddy, which is usually the the co ring leader. You know, there's like there's like four guys which are working together to pump it because they they have the following the followers and so they would get in first and they, they they stagger who gets in who gets out things like that these things are all done back in the day penny stock days nothing fucking new the difference is this they're dumb they're using discord servers which are recorded guys which are recorded back in the day you know what happened <laughs> we use we use other people's Fucking chat rooms. I never did any of this shit. That's why I'm still around, guys. I'm the only guy that have not keep looking. That not I didn't do shit. If I did shit, I would be a billionaire. That's the thing, guys. I would be a fucking billionaire. Okay, I I worked very hard, which at that time I was very upset because I see people getting rich and all this shit. But thank God, in hindsight, I was a fucking honest individual. I didn't fucking dude. I knew people, but I never participated in that shit and like fuck so i'm around right guys i did not make fucking money off illegal shit like that but back in the day uh they didn't have discord they didn't have slack so you had to program your own um like like a chat room so you you basically create your own fucking chat room and so how can the sec how can the fbi know what the fuck you're doing back now it's easy subpoena discord discord and they're sitting around reading this shit, laughing their fucking ass off, thinking that private messages are safe. Dude, it's Discord. They're, they're a huge company. Slack is a public company. So you cannot get away with stupid shit like this. It's all federally gov- uh, governed and regulated. They're spying on you. It's like a wire tap on your fucking phone. If you want to be safe, bring up a walkie-talkie with, a, the, with an encrypted fucking uh, frequency, then you won't get caught. But if you're using the fucking telephone, everybody knows you're getting wiretapped, right? If you're fucking sending Yahoo emails, you know that they can subpoena Yahoo and get your fucking email. These guys thought they, what the fuck they're thinking, dude? They're using Discord to do this shit. This is the reason why MIC uses Slack, guys. We use Slack because it's a public company. We cannot scam you. We're not doing private messages because these private messages will get back if we're scamming. Do you understand this? These scammers are using public fucking communication chat rooms to do their scamming. Dumb as shit. Dumb as shit. Back then, it was a privately programmed chat room. But I never do this shit. But I know people that did. And trust me, they 
SEC calls, FBI calls, they have a back door. They're reading your private messages. You be fucking very careful using these private chats. I would never trust any fucking chat room that uses their own private chats. Because what happens? Imagine if you are playing poker, guys. If you guys are playing poker on a fucking website that someone created, they are reading your hand. No doubt about it. They have a backdoor, super fucking admin access, super user access. They're reading your fucking hold cards, you dumbass. You guys are all dumb if you guys are using a privately developed chat room. You don't know what the fuck is going on. They're, they're emailing each other, not even, they're private messaging each other because they're not going to get caught. They, they, they develop their own fucking back end. They're super spying on you, whatever the fuck it may. You're saying that private messages, they're reading your private messages. All this is designed, okay? And so, this is why we do you Slack so that you know 100%. We're not scheming you. We're not fucking DMing each other all this fucking shit, guys, okay? And so, eventually, everybody gets fucking caught. The reason they get caught is they, they, they were too vocal. If you make money and you're smart, shut the fuck up and get the fuck out. Don't be known, okay? And it's not really their fault per se. They should have got caught sooner. But you have to realize FBI and SEC are very slow. It takes them five years after the fact, three years after the fact, okay? When you least expect it, they knock on your fucking door because they need information, all that shit, right? And so sometimes, guys, it's, it's, they, if it was any other time, you get slapped on the wrist. But the problem now, you have the, the FTX debacle. You have all these people pissed off about the economy. So they're going to be, sadly, they're going to be made an example of, guys. They are going to get fucking the maximum sense. They should not deserve the maximum because you know what, man? Everybody else doesn't get the maximum. Wall Street is stealing billions of dollars every fucking day. No one goes to prison. They get small ass fines and everyone walks away. Okay, but they, but you know the SEC is working with them. The government's working with these Goldman Sachs of the world. The uh, the treasurer of the United States is always, if you take a look at this, the ex CEO of Goldman Sachs. Why the fuck would they bite the hand that feeds them, guys? Okay, so sadly they are gonna get made an example of because to because the because the people right now are pissed off they don't they want to blame it on someone they become the scapegoat okay and so the atlas guys unfortunately what they did okay they don't have insider information they all pump it up. every one of these fucking goldman sachs jp morgan all those guys do the same shit but why is it legal it's legal because they are analysts what do you think a buy upgrade is a sell downgrade is you don't think these firms know ahead of time they're fucking paying that Alice to tell you to do upgrades and downgrades and all this shit? Why is it that one stock has fucking five analysts saying super buy, super buy, and then five other analysts saying super sell, super sell? It's all because that's the legal way to pump it up. They're making money every time they do an upgrade, downgrade because they're moving money around and then, and then they get paid every time they do a, a stock sell, uh, a transaction for someone. So everybody... On their end, is doing pump it up. But you know, you, you have to play within the rules, guys. You have to play within their fucking rules. And, and then when you figure out the rules, just fucking milk the rule until the rule changes. Rule changes all the time. This is what I keep trying to tell you. Uh, reverse splits. I milk that fucking shit every fucking time until it doesn't work anymore. And then, you know, I, but the thing is, each time it fucking works, the next time, don't be fucking greedy. That's a problem because what happens is like, oh, the first time I didn't go enough. The second time, okay, I went more. And the third time, I was like, oh, shit, I should have went all my money in. That's when you lose all your money, guys, okay? It works a few times, and then, and then people get fucking greedy. And the moment more people find out, that's when you get hosed. That's when you get set up, okay? And so how do you keep alive in these markets, guys? Learn to trade. If you learn to trade the correct way, you do not need to copy anybody trades, okay, guys? And I'm telling you guys <laughs> – it's easy to know who's the scammer. You just don't want to believe it. The scammers are happening right in front of your face. They're the ones that are telling you what to buy and sell. They're in before you, but you're too lazy. You just want an excuse. You don't want to fucking work hard, guys. You, want to, you just want to follow an idiot, okay? And then the idiot is your best friend until you lose money. And then all of a sudden, oh, shit, I, I got scammed. No, you didn't get scammed, dumbass. You, your scale, are the scammer. You scammed yourself. Now you're trying to blame other people? Shut the fuck up. Eat your loss like a fucking man and shut the fuck up. 
Okay? That's exactly what it is, guys. Learn to fucking trade. Learn to control your own money, your own destiny. And this is why we do what we do. It's, it's a very difficult job to try to... Man, we can make so much money, much more money by alerting people, by telling people what to follow. You don't see me pump shit, guys. I post my shit after the fact. I want you to learn. And it's the reason we do this because we actually care. We make money already. I don't need to fucking... I'm not that desperate to fucking do this shit. Dude, I've made so much money where, you know, I may not... It's not, not like I don't need any money. Everyone needs money. But it doesn't turn me on. That You see what I'm saying? When, when, you, when you get out there already, when I got there, it doesn't turn me on. What's another fucking fancy-ass watch going to do? All these guys are buying these watches I used to fucking own like 10, 15 years ago. I don't even fucking wear any watches anymore. <laughs> you know? Uh, all these guys are buying the cars I used to fucking own like 20 years ago, right? Same thing with the mansions I used to have, right? Same thing with the first class and all this shit. So I'm back to basics. I'm just fucking enjoying my fucking life out of the spotlight. I love it. You know? My goal is to make money, help people make money, and to live a happy life where I never have to look over my shoulder and worry that someone's after me because I lost money, whatever. Okay, guy? That's the beauty of life, guys. The beauty of life is to be happy because, you know what, man? You're going to get to the point where you will make money if you do it the right way, guys. And then you're going to realize that, you know what? That doesn't really make you fucking happy. You just thought it makes you happy because – but the thing is everybody needs money. Of course, everybody needs money, guys. But making – Money the correct way is better than making money the wrong way and having to watch over your shoulder and and be scared you're going to get killed, you're going to get fucking arrested, things like that, guys, okay? And so my Christmas gift to you guys ongoing is – I'm not going to give you any stock picks. I'm just going to fucking tell you life. Remember that I used to do that life coaching shit back then? My life, my life is not fucking perfect. I'm not a perfect person. But – what I want is for all my friends and followers who are actually good people out there that followed me for years and years to not repeat the same mistakes I did. I made a shit ton of fucking mistakes. So when you're paying for MIC, you're not paying for me to give you stock advice. You're paying to not repeat the same mistakes that I did. Me getting to where I got to right now has been very fucking painful. Very fucking painful. You only see the success and you assume it's happiness. But to get there, it took a lot of fucked up sacrifice that I can never, ever get back. Like, dude, I've been – personally, my, my personal life is shit because I spent all my fucking time trading and, and thinking that's going to make me happy. And when I realized, I look back and I'm fucking stupid. I, I had what I had. I had my happiness. I just didn't know it. And so I don't want you to repeat the same fucking mistakes, guys. And so that's why you're paying for MIC4. That's why you're here listening to me. That's why you follow me. It's not to fucking learn how to make money. It's – what not to fucking do, okay? Because right now, I don't can't tell you how to make money because I cannot make money 100% of the time. But if, I, you, if you lose money by following me, I'm going to feel like shit. But what I can do is to tell you the mistakes I did so that you do not fall into the same trap. For example, okay? Like, like the way that some people are trading RSI indicators, all this fucking shit, MACD, bullshit. Ichiku crowd. Those do not fucking work in short-term day trading scalp. You see fucking guys. I call them farmer, whatever. They used to talk about Ichiku fucking whatever the fuck. Then he talked about MACD, reversal shit. I'm like, now he doesn't even talk about it at all. And now he's just going back to fucking straight resistance. They're drawing fucking lines. Everyone's now is drawing a fucking line. Everyone's talking about zombie fucking rule. Everyone's drawing a line. And, and that's their support and resistance. They used to laugh about us all the time about drawing basic fucking lines. But that fucking has been working for a hundred fucking years. None of this other bullshit. Do what fucking works. And then when you get into the niche, then you can add your own indicators that work for that niche. Okay, guys, my job is to show you what works for me and to avoid you going down the wrong rabbit hole and wasting your fucking time and your life at, at, at fucking dupe dumb shit. So you imagine if you thought MACD was the answer because some fucking idiot that had a chat room, his name is Farmer, told you that MACD he was using. Now he's going to talk about that. You have wasted all your fucking time, lost all your fucking money on MACD bullshit. And then now like, holy shit, now he doesn't use it anymore. Okay, guys, so when you're looking... For a mentor, you're not looking for him to tell you what you need to do. You're looking for a mentor that's been around, got fucking their ass kicked, but still made it. So that you do not repeat the same mistakes he did. So let's take a look at the three things we talked about today, right? And I'll end it. Number one, see, uh, reverse split, COSM. Now you fucking learn about reverse splits, right? They're using the reverse split to gain you to... But eventually, it's going to go back reverse now. Because once people get scared of the reverse split, they won't go long anymore... And then you can then you can short it again. But it's not something 
that is repeatable and consistent anymore, guys. You know, that's not a pattern that you should bank on. You can look and do all this stuff, but that's not a pay. Okay. And number two is the fact that um, the pump and dump guys, you know exactly what to do. You know they're pumping. It doesn't matter if they go to jail or not. It's up to you. I really don't give a fuck if they go to jail or not. I actually prefer they do not because they bring in volume. Who of them? I'm not getting scammed. <laughs> the people that get scammed, they want to get scammed. I have no fucking feeling bad for any of those guys. Okay, because you know what, man? You want to fucking make money cheating. You knew that they're pumping and dumping. You were making money. The moment you lose, you cry. Oh, I'm going to go call the SEC. This guy fucking scammed me. No, you dumbass. You scammed yourself. And that's why you remain poor. Because you know what, man? You need to take ownership, accountability for your own fucking shit. You're too lazy to learn. So you copy these guys and they made money for you and then you lose and you cry. Whose fault is that, guys? I have no sympathy for these guys that, that want to get rich quick, follow pumpers, and then cry about it. Don't fucking cry about it. Learn about it. Okay? Learn about it or, you know, that's what it is. They're, you know it's obvious. They're not fucking forcing you to buy this shit. <laughs> you knew it was a scam. You think a fucking company go from 20 cents to fucking $10? They got lucky on CEI. They made a lot of money on that fucking shit. I mean, whatever they fucking did, right? And so they, they became famous. I have a couple of plays that they pumped from like pennies to dollars. And now all of a sudden they're, they got a huge ass falling. It's so like, holy shit. I'm going to fucking now instead. They got lucky. That's what it is. They got lucky. And then, and then they started to pump. And then you realize they pump. And then over time, people like myself, people like Alex, people like in, in, my, in my C chat room, we found out their fucking pattern. We started to short all the shit. And now you cannot make fucking money because I'm shorting that shit. Alex is shorting that shit. And my C is shorting that shit. And you're fucking dead. <laughs> and so what happens is now that we're shorting this shit, the main pumpers are selling earlier. They're not holding because I'm shorting that shit. I'm shorting that shit. Alex is shorting that shit. They don't want to lose. Who loses? You lose. This is the vicious cycle of the markets, guys. Stocks go up, they go down. Uh, bull market to bear market, back and forth, up and down. When someone does the same thing over and over, same thing in sports, you cannot just keep running the same plays over and over in sports, right? I would figure that shit out. Same thing with trading. Same thing with life. If you do the same fucking shit over and over and you get rewarded for it, someone wants a piece of your system. It becomes, what's it called? It becomes like sac uh, um, saturated. Same thing with like Amazon. <laughs> all these fucking Amazon guys selling this shit. Now, I, every time I go on a fucking Instagram, I see so many ads. Oh, fucking little kids saying they're selling fucking products on Amazon. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? They're all saturated shit. Look, I found this fucking, uh, I found this fucking uh, product on uh, Alibaba for 25 cents. Now I'm selling this shit for $10. You don't think other guys have been doing this shit already? It's so saturated, guys. And so when you start to see a lot of those guys start selling that shit, you know, like, hey... But the thing is, learn, learn how to do it. Then you do it for yourself. Don't just copy these guys that, that, that claim that they are doing all this shit, guys. But what you can do is learn from their mistakes, okay, guys? Um, anything else, guys, before I end it? I want to keep it short and sweet, and I think uh, I covered this, uh, this this new format. I think I love it. I'm, you know, We're going to talk about uh, topics that only experienced can teach you. Cause I've been around guys. I got my ass kicked, but I always also did very well. So, you know, I'm not just a guy that's fucking like made money, um, getting lucky. I, I got my ass kicked to learn, to be able to do this. And so what I want to do is to share my experience with you so that you do not fail. I'm an old man. I may look like a fucking sweet guy, but I you know I'm an old guy. So, um, so hopefully you understand that, uh, the pump and dump thing, dude, Atlas goes, it could be a bunch of other guys, guys. It could be your chat room guru. I'm not going to fucking mention any names, but if your chat room guru exhibits the same quality as Atlas, what the fuck? Oh, you can't be fucking like making, making fun of Atlas when you're fucking subscribed to the pump room pumper them, themselves. Okay, guys with fucking chat rooms and fucking following and all of a sudden they're long this shit. Oh, why are they pumping their longs? Because they're in that shit, guys. They're in tons of that shit. They're selling it to you. Okay, learn to fucking trade for yourself and stop fucking copying other people. Okay, and that's what we do at MIC, guys. And so, if you want to fucking learn the right way, join MIC, guys. So, all right, guys, I'll catch you guys next week. Hopefully, you guys will uh, not get scammed <laughs> because if you get scammed, it's on you and you want to get scammed. <laughs>